yes, it's that time. Sorry for the delay. I was out an hour and a half away from my house, buying property, buying land, not property, buying land. It's property land, I don't know. Um, but tonight is a very, very special topic that I know that's going to touch a lot of people's hearts. But we're going to get inside the discussion. Either you like it or not. Oh, yes. Let's get into it. So this topic is very, very volatile when we talk about lending and giving family our money and resources. Now, as a disclaimer starting off, I would just like to say for those family members, we that is located, you know, in the U.S. or abroad, different continents, different countries, we that be in the Caribbean, Africa, also Europe. If they are sickly, if they are disabled, if they are handicapped, this pretty much goes without saying I'm not including them. But we're talking about those able body family members that use you as a dependency in order for them to come up. And what they do is they use your status, they use your location, they use your intelligence, they use your savviness, they use your hard work, they use everything against you in order for you to give them your money that you worked hard for. Because some families, as Wayne Peterson said here, that they create a system of borrowing money as a means of dependency. Meaning that they guilt you. They make you feel guilty. They make you feel obligated for your success or for your limited success. There's a lot of people that come to America, that go to Europe from the Caribbean, and all the different African countries to essentially make a better way of life for themselves. And I'm not just saying from those countries, but even within the United States, you most likely have to make it a policy not to lend friends and family your money. Why is that? Because they know the very detailed, intricate parts of your emotions, of your spirit, of your soul, and they will bank on that for their good and for your faults. See, this is this, this topic. Let me tell you something, family. I've talked about this topic before in very great detail. Let me show you something very quickly here. I did this video four years ago. Okay, I'm having some technical difficulties, but I did this video four years ago, and the name of it is Stop Giving Family All Your Money. And what I'm talking about is, I'm, I met a, I met a, um, a, one of my clients. She came to me and she said, well, I'm having financial difficulties. And when I broke down her financial portfolio and I realized, I said, hold up, well, why are you giving your mother $800 a month? Is she in a senior citizen home? Um, are you trying to supplement her income? And she said, yeah, I'm trying to supplement her income. I said, why are you trying to supplement her income? She's like, oh, well, she doesn't make enough. But not to give you the whole entire story, come to find out her mother was gambling $1,500 a month. This is when I was living in Washington State because there's casinos everywhere because all of the uh, American Indian tribes. But she was gambling $1,500 a, a month and depending on her daughter to supplement her income to support her habit. This is what I'm talking about. See, with your family and friends, you have to be very, very direct. You have to be very, very direct. You can't beat around the corner. You can't beat around the bush. 
Oh, well, let me look into my finances. You already know you don't have the money or you already know you don't want to give them the damn money in the first place. Because you know why? You know their lifestyle. You know what they do. You know what they don't do. You know they don't grind. They don't have the same tenacity, the same discipline, the same routine, the same rhythm. They don't have that. They don't have the same ethics or morality than you do. So essentially, you know, giving you your money is a charity case and you don't want to give your money to these people. Now, more times than not, you feel a connection because you are, quote unquote, connected to them by blood. But the only way you connected to that person that they see fit is your finances are your resources. How much can money can you give me? See, and, 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 and the problem with this is this happens within the United States. This happens in Mexico. This happens in the Caribbean. This happened in the continent of Africa where those family members like, oh, we are dying here. We're struggling here where you was there at one point in time, too, and you were struggling and you were dying. But what did you do? Did you grind? Did you save? What did you do to put yourself in a better place? You guys not listening. I don't think you guys are hearing me. Because I know a lot of you have a real strong connection to your family. No matter cousins, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, mother, fathers. I understand. So if the direct approach doesn't work for you, what about the indirect approach? Tell them, you know what? Uh... I need time to decide. That's very passive aggressive. But again, you don't want to give your money away for people you know they're not going to multiply it. Here's the thing. Have you noticed where people come to you more times than not? It's either one or two things. They want your money for bills they knew they had a month ago. Oh, um, they're going to put this out if I don't pay this. Well, what happened? Oh, I lost my job. How did you lose your job? Well, this supervisor, you guys get what I'm getting at. Or then some family will come to you and try to scam you. Oh, you know, I got a great business opportunity. Um, I, I need 10 grand. I need five grand. And they're talking to you like you a fucking bank. Come on, man. Talk to me, family. What's going on? Good evening, Tom. I see you in the room. He said, great topic, because this is a very difficult topic, especially living in the, um, uh, uh, the particular situation, okay, this pandemic that we're actually living in right now. All this money that the U.S. is forking out to the citizens, and what, ha what has this done for America? Let me tell you what, what it has done to America. It has put a microscope on your financial portfolio. It's put a microscope on your checking and savings and investments account. And what you're noticing then, your ass is in trouble. See, you didn't, for, you didn't foresee a pandemic happening, did you? you? You didn't foresee that you was going to be out of work for a whole entire year. Yeah, 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 yeah. You didn't see that. You didn't see that the measly 3% that you put inside of your 401k, you were going to take out to pay for your rental bills or your house bill. You didn't see that, did you? But all along, what you knew is people told you to what? Save and invest your money, living below your means. And now you are bothering your family members who have taken that great advice, who've been used in wisdom, who has been using knowledge, in order to do so, and then you are begging and pleading for them to help you out. And here's another thing. Don't go to your family members with some bullshit-ass story thinking they're not smart enough to see through the smoke screen. Come on. Oh, well, uh, can, you, can you pay for this for me and I'll give it to you in cash? Wait a minute, don't you got a debit card? Yeah, but, uh, well, the bank... Well, you can ask the bank for an increase. Oh, you can? And then they come up with another sob story. See, this is the this is the plague that has been affecting us 
it's like a virus, right? That attacks you because you 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 feel somewhat obligated to help, and then you see like there's some other some other uh, 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 plans that's going on that you just can't foresee. And listen, when you're giving out your money, you should be asking questions. What are you going to do with the money? How am I going to get the money back? And here's what I said four years ago in 2017. Let me pop this up again. Let's see if it messes up. Okay, let me see one more time, family. Let me show you this video I did four years ago. Yeah, I did this video four years ago. I look a lot young and a lot smaller, but nonetheless, it says right here, April 7, 2017, stop giving family all your money. I got about 60, 63,000 views, okay? And 61 people didn't agree, but 2.1K did. Because here's the thing. It's very hard to push back against your family. It's very, very hard to push back your loved ones, especially when it's your mother and father, especially when it's your sister and brother. But let me ask you this. What are the issues that your sister and brother, your mother and father, your aunts and uncles, your first, second and third cousins are having? Because you know more than I do. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And, you know, they're using you. But you feel obligated because you know what your uncle will say. <laughs> you know what your aunt will say. Oh, well, remember, I took you to Six Flags. Remember the carnival? I bought you that teddy bear. They will use these very minute examples and situations to play with your heartstrings, to make you feel guilty. Listen, you were, you were a freaking kid. You had no obligation. You wasn't asked to be brought into this world. So you should not feel obligated to pay anybody anything, especially when you're trying to survive yourself. Now, some of you say, well, I have plenty to give. But the question is, when is this going to stop? Now, for my for my friends from across the lake, the Caribbean and the continent of Africa, as well as Europe. My question is, when are you going to stop paying these monthly payments, sending money back home? When does this stop? Because when you were there, what were you doing to support that family? Or what was everybody else doing to support your family? What, what were you doing? What were they doing? Here's another thing. Have you ever thought about this? There's other ways that you can help them that they may not truly understand. And this is what I learned just using a little bit of wisdom here. When people really need help, they will accept your help in many different ways. Hey, listen, I know you need a thousand dollars. I don't have it, but I can give you some tips. I can give you some advice in order to make this money. And see, sometimes my mind gets the best of me. I say, well, you know what? In this area, they don't have a scheduled grass cutter. You can use my lawnmower, okay? You have to pay for the gas, but you can go and cut grass. And, and family, you know who's going to sell the lawnmower and you know who's going to use the lawnmower. You, you get what I'm saying there, right? But a lot of times when your family actually leave, needs the money, sometimes they just need the information. They need the information to go out and make their own money Versus you giving it to them because you're going to be like a drug dealer with no return. OK, drug dealers love a big profit. Drug dealers love a big return. Whether you you're peddling pharmacist drug or illegal drugs, it does not matter. They love a good return. And when you give people information, if they really need the money, they will execute on the information that you're giving them. But if they are dependent on that money like a drug, you will see no return. What are they willing to do for that money? What are they willing to do for that money? I, I gave this example and I said, what if you wrote up a small contract and you got it notarized, say, hey, I trust you, but I want to ensure that I get my money back. So I'm gonna put this on a contract. We're gonna get it notarized and you can hold up and look at some people, oh, I don't wanna do that to my family member. But do you want to give them $1,000? Do you want to give them $5,000? And you don't want your money back. 
And I've done this. And I know other people that do this. Hey, listen, I'm going to give you $500. I'm going to give you $1,000. I'm going to give you $5,000. And I don't want it back. But don't ask me for any, any other money. This is a one-time gift. And you stand by your word regardless of who that person may be. I know people's parents who are on a set income. They're getting some sort of retirement check. They're getting some sort of disability check and they can pay all of their bills. But, oh, you know, we were thinking about going on a vacation. And this is what I've learned, which is very, very sickening. It is very, very disheartening. And it's very, very stupid. Have you noticed that some people know that they have bills but they're willing to forego a month, two months, three months of their rent and or mortgage to take a vacation, to buy clothing, to buy electronics. Do you guys know anybody like that? And then when their ass is in hot water, they call you up. Hey, sis. Hey, bruh. Can you, um, well, you know, we're struggling and, uh, like, whoa, 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 what did, what, whoa, Wasn't you just in Mexico last week? Wasn't you just in Jamaica? Wasn't you just in Ghana? Wasn't you just in Italy last week? And now you're calling me for money? Did you? Family, you family, you can't let your family take advantage of you because they will. And this is the perfect time. This is the perfect time. Oh, I, I, I took the shot and, um, you know, I'm out of work and uh, family. You told your brothers and sisters, your mother, your brother, your aunts, your uncles, your first, your second and third cousin and your friends to save their money. You told them to invest their money. You told them to get out of debt. But did they listen? And now they're calling you for help. And here's the thing. It's absolutely your right to give them your money. It's absolutely your right to let them, you lend out some of your money. But the question is, how long are you willing to live under the boot of them asking you for something and giving you nothing in return? And here's another one. And I know some of you have been victims of your family. You have been victims of your friends when they say, oh, well, let me, uh, loan $50 and you give them $50 and then a month or two thinking that you was going to get your money back they ask you for more money and they ask you for more money and they forget that you never they, they forget that they never paid you back the first time this is hilarious to me this is hilarious to me and, and quite frankly I would like to give a shout out to my family because this has never happened to me except for one time. And I gave um, one of my family members a, a, a love gift and they have never asked me for money again. And here's another thing that I think is very important that I think a lot of us do when it comes to our family members. A lot of us do this to our family members. We start to disclose financial details. Yeah, 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 yeah. We start to disclose financial details of how much money we make, how much money we invest, um, how much money we expect. And what I've noticed is a lot of these people who struggle with their finances, who struggle with finance, uh, uh, who struggle with money in general, guess what all of them usually get a big lump sum of? Can anybody tell me? Can anybody tell me what most of these people usually get a big lump sum of? A tax return. And for this particular subject, I'm talking about those who are located in the United States. They get a tax return. And what do they do with that $5,000, $8,000, $10,000 $10, tax return? What do they do? Tell me what they do. Do they get rams on their car? Uh, uh, do they buy some bling bling? Okay. What do they do? Do they... Do they uh, go on fleet. I don't know. What are some of the things that they do with this particular money? Because it's very important that you guys understand exactly what I'm talking about because the one thing that I haven't mentioned, I haven't harped on too much is friends. 
Oh, it's awkward when friends and family ask to borrow money, isn't it? It's awkward when you don't want to give them the money, but you feel obligated to give them the money. But in the end of the day, it's your money and you have every right to say no. But the one thing that's the one thing that is preventing you to say no, the one thing that is stopping you from saying no is your guilt. You say it's love. It's the guilt. Because you know if you don't give them that money, they're going to use that as a weapon. Anytime you guys have get-togethers, anytime you guys have cookouts or, 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 or potlucks, whatever you guys have, they're going to use it. Or it's going to feel awkward when you guys have this get-together. They're going to look at you and you're going to look at them and you got this weird energy that's surrounding you. You're like, wow. Why are you feeling guilty? You have every right to say no. Good point. That's a really good point. Like, where's my damn mouse at? There we go. Tom says a new car. Family say, hey man, I need, <laughs> I need um three thousand dollars put down on a new car. Um, where well, you can't afford a new car. Yeah, yeah, I just need your help. No, I'm not going to help you with that. And then they will question you on why you said no. Oh, what about this one? Oh, I know you got the money. That's because they're counting your pockets. They know what's in your wallet because haphazardly in conversation, being fruitful, fun, and enlightening, you said, yeah, yeah, um, I make a substantial amount of money. Being somewhat charismatic about it, but you should be very humble because you have to know how to operate in certain spaces. Like you may mention that on the group of businessmen and investors, letting them know nonchalantly that you could be a potential investor. But when it comes to your friends and family, don't you know they are jealous of you? They, and it's not a sense of like hate, but they're mad they didn't make the same decisions. But in most cases, do you understand, family? They don't have your mind. They don't have your discipline. They don't have your will. They don't have you like me. I grew up from nothing. I grew up in the gutter. I grew up in the group home. I was institutionalized. I lost my mother at 12, never met my father. And I made decisions and choices to land me in my own home, to have the ability to go out and buy land and buy property and invest and do great things with my finances. And I'm still not done. And then what I've noticed is when you talk to your family about these situations, do they ever take notes? Do they ever say, hold, hold, hold on, that was good, that was good. Let me write this down. Let me take some notes. Where do you get that information at again? Where can I reference that? Or do they just listen to you and try to wait you out and at the end still ask you for that money? And then because you gave them all that great information, you feel as though because they listen to you, once you give them that money, they're going to do what you essentially gave them advice to do. And you know that rarely ever happens. Jerome says, "Man, it hurts so much. Indeed, it does, Jerome. It hurts. Uh, it hurts. I mean, they play with your heartstring. You got your guilt. You got your emotions. You got your conscience. You got your anxiety. You got your depression. You you are kind of you're kind of toiling." back and forth, seesawing, like, what should I do? You're talking to your significant other. You're like, babe, or, 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 or whether it be your husband, you're like, babe, should I give this money? Should, I, should we lend this money? Should we give this money? You, you, you're going back and forth. And let your other significant be your balancing beam. Let them be your balancing beam. Because when it's your significant other and it's not their family, they're going to give you the truth. They're like, uh, you know, last month you gave them $150. And now they have another excuse why they're trying to get more money out of you today. 
And you have to really take a step back. What's beneficial, right? What's beneficial? Because at the end of the day, what is your purpose? Are you trying to exponentially grow profit or are you trying to exponentially give profit? Which one? Obtaining profit or giving profit? Which one is it? See, this is a very deep discussion that nobody likes to hear because they know once they hear it. See, that's the thing about information, knowledge, and wisdom. Once you hear it, it's in your brain. It's in your mind. And you're going to be toiling when the situation comes up. And you're going to be like, shit. I don't know. Man. But it's very, very easy. Either you're going to give them the money or you're not. Or you're going to say, hey, here are here are the uh, uh, policies, guidelines, stipulations, whatever you, terms you want to use. Here's what you should do. This is what I want you to do. If you really want this five thousand dollars, where here's a contract that we got to go down to the bank and we got to get notarized. How much you gonna say you are gonna pay me a month? So okay, within six months time, this money should be paid off. It's an interest free loan. Well, well, well. Why do we got to go down to the bank and get it notarized and all that? We don't need to be doing that. I'm family. I'm family. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. This is not about me trusting you. I trust you. This is more for clarity. I, I just want to be clear about the terms that we're getting into. I, it's, it, we stated it right here. It's very clear. No, 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 no. I, I want clear, concise, defined terms. And if you say that you're going to do what you say you're going to do, then us going down, getting this letter, this contract notarized isn't a problem. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Jerome. Now you're the bad guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're the bad guy, Jerome, because you got the money. You got the money and they want your money for absolutely nothing. I propose this. Here's a great idea to give your family some money if you want to just give your money away. What talent, what skills do your family have? And some of you are not going to agree with this. That's perfectly fine. But I'm just trying to help y'all give you some ideas. Your family needs, uh, let's say, $100. And you say, well, what's the minimum wage in this city, in this town, in this state, in this country? $15. Okay, cool. What I want you to do is I want you to come and clean my house. And for every hour that you clean my house, I'm going to give you $15. If you, kick, if you cook us uh, dinner, I'm going to give you $15. If you give us this. So at the end of the day, you can possibly make that money. You probably come at 7 a.m. in the morning. I need my baseboards cleaned, my doors cleaned, my knobs cleaned. I need to be vacuumed, mopped. Come up with all types of shit. Yeah. Come up with all types of chores and things so they work for the money. Because here's the thing. Giving you... Giving your family money is pacifying them. But when you tell your family to work for the money, oh, now you see their character. Now you see their attitude. Now you see that personality popping out. Wait a minute. I come in you, and I'm just using this. I, I don't know what attitude. I'm just being theatrical. Back on roll. Now, oh, uh, I got to do all these strange things for some change. Oh, yeah. Money ain't free. Listen, I had to work my butt off to save up this money. Now you're asking for the money that I work my butt off. Guess what you're going to do for this money? Oh, yeah, you're going to work. So you understand that money is not free. Money takes your time. Money takes your labor. Money takes your skills and knowledge and experience. And so what I need for you is if you want this money, I need you to type up these reports. I need you to put these things in the sales spreadsheet. Whatever skills, talents, and, 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 and knowledge that your family knows, you need to be putting their ass to work. Oh, yeah. If you just don't want to give away your money, if you feel like you're the bad guy, then put them to work. Guess what? Uh, I'm out of town this week. Cut my grass. Oh, yeah. I need my grass cut. I need it trim. I need it edge and I need it blown. I need all of that done. That is what you need to do. Stop giving family all of your money. Stop giving family all of your money. I don't care if it's a pandemic, a pandemic. I don't care what's going on because they would use any excuse to get inside of your wallet, any excuse to get inside your purse. They was doing it before the pandemic. And they still doing it during the pandemic. So it really doesn't matter, does it? It really doesn't matter. Good night, Jermaine Anderson.
Tom said they're not going to do it. Good old time. Time is on our side. That's right. They're not going to do it. You know why? Because they want something for nothing. They want something for nothing. And I'm not saying everybody, but majority of the people that come from come for you and ask for your money, <laughs> they don't want to do nothing for your money. They don't want to do anything for your money. If you know uh, this evening, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm enjoying, I'll just put this up here if you guys can see that. This is a DBL by Francisco Amante, okay? This is the, I think the 35th anniversary edition of this particular one. It's a medium, um, it's a light to medium smoke. I'm enjoying this as I'm speaking with you guys here this evening. And nowadays people are still asking their family for money. And then you have to start asking questions before you give away your money. Well, well, what did you do with your stimulus check? What did you do with your P uh, PPP loan? What did you do with your tax return? These are questions that needs to be asked because here's the thing. When they go and you go to ask for a loan, either before a house, a condo, a car, a business, whatever it may be, what do the creditors do? They look at your credit report. They look at your credit score because they're looking at your history of how you handle your finances. And so when you're lending money to your family, if that's the case, then you need to do the same thing because you want to know what is their track record. And a lot of you already know. Now, for those people who live overseas, oh, you guys have it the worst. You came to America. You came to Europe. You came to the Western world. And they see you living the limelight. You living real good. You got a house, a car. You started a business. And they're like, oh, you got to send this money back. Your family is struggling here. You know your family more than I do. What were they doing when you were uh, uh, scraping along pennies to buy that plane ticket so you can go live with some people or family that was already here in America or Europe? And then even doing that, you got a job. You was on Uber. You was on Lyft. You was on DoorDash. You was on Grubhub. You was on all these little side jobs, scraping against money to start your business because you was highly educated and you got skills and all that. What were they doing? Were they just kicking a jig? Was they just chilling? What were they doing to, to make themselves more profitable? What were they doing so they can gain more skills? See, these are the questions that you should essentially ask yourself before you just give family your money because you know they're going to use you. Everybody wants something for nothing. I mean, even I do. I will, when people say free, I go, huh? Free? These are the things that you should be asking your money. What else? Your family look, look, looks to you as you are ATM, an automatic teller machine. And they know your PIN code. They know your access code. If I say X, Y, and Z, they're going to give me the money. If I bring this situation up, they're going to give me the money. If I mention this, if I say this, if I refer to this, they're going to give me the money. The question is, why are you giving them your money? How are you giving them that money? And how does it benefit you to give them your money? How? That's the question I want to know. So if you will, I know Sierra Collins says here, they do what they want to do with their money and do what they have to do with your money. <laughs> Dude, that's so true. That is so, let me pop that up again. Guys, this just look at that very quickly. I, 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 I love what C.L. Collins just said. C.L. Collins say they do what they want to do with their money. Go to the club, buy shoes and purses and clothes and take vacations, right? But when it comes to your money, they use your money to pay their bills. That is what they do. That is what they do. And as uh, Tom said, guess what? They make you feel guilty. 
They make you feel guilty, family. Guess what else they use? They use your kids. That's right. They use your kids. They use their kids. They say, well, remember, I took your kids to Chuck E. Cheese and I didn't ask you for no money. Knowing the only thing they spent was about $30, $40. Like, listen, you want $50? Oh, I need I need um, $200. And I'll give you $50 because that's how much you spent at Chuck E. Cheese on my son or daughter. Then they say, hey, you want your nieces and nephews out on the street? This is tough. This is tough. You know what you start telling them? You know what? I don't want my nieces and nephews out on the street because their kids, their children, uh, they have no take in the decisions that you made. So this is what I'll do. If it comes to that, that they're going to be living on the street, drop my nieces and nephews off over here, but you can't stay here. That's what you call tough love. Now, some of you may not agree. Some of you say, well, that's abandoning your family. Let's take, for instance, your family needs your help and they're getting put out because of unforeseen circumstances. So you let you allow them to live with you. Now, while they're living with you, are they filling out resumes, applications? Are they building the business? What are they doing? Are they? And here's my thing. Why, why are they living with you? And, and, and here's the thing. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I'm not going to be a hypocrite. So I'm going to tell my little small story after this point right here. What are they going to be doing while they're living with you scot-free? They have no money. They're going to be eating your food, drinking your water, using your electricity, using your toilet paper, paper napkins, plates, everything. They're using all your resources. So all of your utilities are going to go up, up, and up. What are they doing? Are they cleaning the house? Are they cooking the meals? Are they dropping the kids off at school? What are they doing to earn their lifestyle that you provided for them? What are they doing? So I'll give you a situation of mine. I was living with an ex-girlfriend and we made a deal that I'll give her, uh, I think it was around $1,200 a month. And she asked me to move in with her. And if hindsight was 2020, I wouldn't have moved in, but I moved in and I paid majority of the bills, right? Or I paid a half. I think I paid half of the bills. We broke up. But I was somewhat still in love with her. I still loved her at some point. But I was living with a real close friend of mine. That he allowed me to live scot-free for a whole entire year. He had a two-bedroom condo. He had a futon that turned into a bed. And the only thing I came with, I believe, was a TV. Because I left everything with her because, again, she knew how to play on my heartstrings. She knew how to push my buttons. And she used her kids as a bargaining token because I knew she had three, four kids. There was not mine. But nonetheless, I'm a sucker for kids. I, I, I had a tough upbringing. And every time I see a kid, I want to provide for them the best possible situation imaginable. But she used that and people would use that. They would use your nieces and nephews. OK, they, they, they were used by any means necessary to take the money out of your pockets that you've earned to put money in their pockets that they did not earn. And so here I am living with my friend. Still giving her that twelve hundred dollars. So after about. Eight months, my friend said within that eight months. I borrowed money from my friend because I was broke because I was paying all my bills and I was paying at least half of her bills. And my buddy came to me and said, bro, why, wait a minute. Why are you always broke? Why are you borrowing money from me? It, 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 it wasn't a point that he wasn't going to give it to me because he knew I, I'll give it back because I had a full career. I was making good money. And he said, so why are you always broke? If you if you are essentially making money and you're living here free, why are you borrowing money? I said, well, you know, I still give, you know, such and such, so and so this amount of money. He said, why? You guys are no longer in a relationship. And I want you guys to expand on this because this relationship can actually um, infuses in other different situations. So take take that into account. Don't just use a personal relationship, but you can branch off on it.
And I really sat down and thought, I'm being used. And she's using my love. She's using her kids. So I called her up and I said, I will no longer be giving you money. And you know what she said? Why? You, you told me you'll take care of me. You told me uh, uh, that you love my kids and you want to see them doing well. She used the kids. I'm like, okay, we're, we're not married. We're not engaged. I'm no longer in a relationship with you. You supposed to be a man. So you see how all the different ways how people will come at you to essentially take money out of your pockets and put it in their pockets. All along, it dawned on me when I saw her bank account. Guess how much money she had on her bank account? She had $50,000 in her bank account and still trying to take money in my bank accounts. And guess what she told me? When I told her, I, was, I said, what about that 50,000? Oh, that 50,000 is for me and my kids. What about me? Oh, you a man. You should figure out a way. I have. And to stop giving money to your ass. This is the truth. This is the truth. I know this this topic right here is not popular, family, but hopefully it helps somebody to be in a better position and have a better thought process when it goes about giving family your money. What about this one? I think we need to touch on this one. Um, me and my wife, we have two grown sons. One is. 23, 24, the other one is 21, about to hit 22 in his last year of college. And we have a 10 year old. We have all boys, we have all young men. Now, none of those young men have asked for money. Well, yeah, one of them has asked for money. <laughs> but the question is, how do you stop giving your grown kids money? Those, those 25 year olds. Those 30 year olds. And this is and this is what I've taken more so. From what I've seen. Would it be grown. Women or men that are essentially your children. They mostly go to the women. They go to your wife. They go to your uh, significant other and they use them because they know that they're emotional. They got that, that nature nurture effect. Mom, you know, I really need your help. I just need an opportunity. I just need a chance. And I, if you if you allow me to move in and or let me stay with you. And year after year, you see these grown as men and women living with their parents without a plan. And the reason why that's important is because I know in some cultures, their family members allow their kids to live with them until the you know 25 or 30 but they have a plan. They're saving up for a house. They're saving up um, for uh, 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 some sort of creating a business or building a business. But more times than not, you're grown as men and kids, uh, excuse me, uh, men and women that are living with you, they don't have a plan. They're just leading on. You know what the question you have? Hey, did you go out and do interviews a day? Did you uh, circulate your resume? Did you fill out applications? And they're a lot of you. Let one of them lie to you today. Let one of them lie to you today. Did you know in America there's a labor shortage? Did you know in America there's a labor shortage? Let me let me let me look this up. Because some of you probably never looked this up before. Let me let me just look this up very quickly, okay? Let me look at the labor shortage in America. Let me look this up. The labor shortage in 2021. They say, why are people, why aren't people going back to their jobs? America small businesses. Let me just show you the headlines here. America small businesses still can't find workers, but 
Labor shortages give retail and restaurant workers the upper. Labor shortages are expected to continue as employers struggle. Did you know there's all of these businesses out here? They're looking for people to work. But you have family members still coming to you. You have friends still coming to you. You have your grown children still coming to you, asking you for money. And there's a labor shortage. They are hiring people without the right credentials. They are hiring people without the right degrees and certifications. They're, in, they're hiring people who are highly unskilled for the job. They say, we'll do OJT, on-the-job training. We'll do it for you. We just need bodies. We need people as we try to replace people with AI, machine learning, and robots. <laughs> but for the time being, the technology is not just here on a wide scale where we replace people with robots. At least you can have a job now. Why is that? Why are people still coming to you for money? Stimulus check out the stimulus check. PPP loan out the PPP loan. Why are they still coming to you for money? Grants out the grants. Personal loans out the personal loans. And you ask, why are you unemployed? Oh, well, you know, there, there's a pandemic going on and I don't want to catch the Rona. Wear a mask. Socially distance. Go get a freaking job. Because here's another question. I propose that you have your family members to work for you. Have them to do things you probably don't want to do. I mean, I know me and my wife, we don't necessarily hate meal prepping every Sunday. It's been beneficial for us. We take probably the half day on Sunday and we make all of our meals for the entire week. And it gives us a lot of our time back. But even if you essentially hire one of your family members to do that, how long are you willing to hire them? Because maybe you hire them to help them and not help you, right? And then here's a question. It don't take no skills to really cook a meal or clean a house. And you say, hey, listen, I'll give you $15 an hour. $15 an hour? How much were you expecting to get? If you're working at Wendy's, KFC, Burger King, McDonald's, Jack in the Crack, White Castle, in and out wherever you guys are, what, or, or how much money are they going to get paid there? Nine, 10, 11, 12 dollars. You, you may get 15 dollars depending on what state, maybe New York and Washington state. I'm just saying, have you ever thought about it? I'm just saying, have you ever thought about it? Let's see what you guys have been saying. Let's see what you guys have been saying here. CL Collins said, they just need your kindness. <laughs> oh, yeah, they need your kindness, all right. And your kindness comes in the form of money. Oh, yeah, your kindness comes in the form of money. Because that's all essentially they want from you is your money. But as I'm looking here, I continue to see headline after headline. Desperate U.S. cities pitch Wall Street style on bonuses. What does a worker want? Want the labor shortage, really? The labor shortage is worse than it looks. Help isn't coming. Then the excuses start to pour in, family. The excuses start to pour in. Well, I don't know how to write a resume. Oh, well, you come over Friday night, Saturday evening, Saturday afternoon, I help you to write your resume. Matter of fact, we can use my resume as a template. Oh, well, you know, uh, I had to do this. How you have anything to do and your ass is broke? Don't you need money? See, here's my thing. I have a website, rossworldfinancial.com. Rossworld and there's prices on there for financial consultation. But right now, I'm giving all of my knowledge, all of my wisdom for absolutely free. Do I have to say more? Or as the young folk would say, say less. I'm on it. Let me look it up. I'm going to show you my website. I'm only showing you my website because, again, you're going to see prices on it. And I didn't put this out as public knowledge until now. But 
absolutely free. This is my website. Of course, this is not me. I don't know what the CEO expert was doing, but anyway, I have prices on here, but you see this free consultation for 15 minutes. Anybody who's ever been one of my clients would tell you, I do not put them on a time clock. I give them all the information and I got in trouble by my wife. My wife said, babe, it's supposed to be 15 minutes and you'll give them all the information. You give them all the documentation for absolutely free. I said, babe, you know, I do it for the people because people who really want to do something for their lives, they won't do it. You know, they would do it regardless. Right. And a lot of times people say, no, I want to get paid for my time. I get that. But your family would use your sucker ass. And if your family is using you over and over again, yes, come to the grips, come to the conclusion that you are a sucker. And I know this is hard. So a lot of people are not going to accept this information, but it's the absolute truth. And by the way, if you like this video, if you don't like this video, go ahead and give it a like. Whether it be up or down, I don't care. But here's the thing that's most important. You have plans, aspiration, goals, dreams, and you can't do that if you're giving all your money away for absolutely nothing. Is what you're doing sustainable? Is what you're doing sustainable? Letting your older children live with you, letting your cousins, your aunts, your uncles, your great grand, all these people within your family, within your life, also your friend. What you're doing, is it sustainable? Until this day, the friend that allowed me to live with him, who didn't charge me a damn dime, I still feel somewhat obligated to him. So when certain things arises, I said, no, nah, man, I'll cover that. We were supposed to go on a trip together. He couldn't make it. Um, he had some things going on. He couldn't make it. But I fronted him, um, I think, half or even the whole bill, because I remember you helped me out for an entire year. And on the way out, even though he didn't ask for anything. I gave him a thousand dollars and family, a thousand dollars. It's nothing compared to how my buddy allowed me to live with him, use his water, use his uh, uh, electricity. I was eating his food. A thousand dollars is nothing. I gave him a thousand dollars in cash because I just thought, hey, you know, this is what I can do right now. He said, man, thank you. I don't really want it. I said, dude, I'm not taking it back. He said, just don't give me no more money because he did it out of the bottom of his heart. But now when I look back on that situation, I was like, damn, I used him. I felt guilty because here I am, an able body with a sound mind that I was being used. I was being coerced. I was being manipulated. And she was using my emotion. She was using my love for her and her kids to take money out of my pockets and put money in her pockets while she had $50,000 in the bank. Why is that important, family? Because some of your family members got money, but they seem as though they're broke. They just rather use your money. <laughs> they use your money to pay their bills. They use your money to go on trips while they're saving their money. And some of you thinking, nah, my family isn't that sinister. You better think again. Hero. Hero says, my brother asks for money all the damn time and gets mad when I say um, when I say no. And he even had the nerve to block me when I told him his girlfriend should be his helpmate and not me. I'm just his little sister. You got to be more careful. You see that family time and time again. This will occur throughout your lifetime. Am I telling you to not help your family? Absolutely not. I am telling you to recognize when your family is using you. That's what I'm telling you. 
Stop giving family all your money. Stop letting them use you and abuse you financially. And see, some of you may not think of all the different ways that your family will use and abuse you for your money. How do they do this? They ask for money constantly and consistently in small increments. $25 here, $50 here, $100 here. Hey, can I live with you for a little bit? Oh, how long are you going to live with me for? Oh, man, you know, just a month. Then a month turns into two months, two months, three months, three months, a year. This is how your family uses you. I tell you, here at Financial Literacy 101, the root of all evil is how money can propel you to do something that you don't want to do. And in this particular topic, in this situation, they're using your heart. They're using your emotions. They're using their connection to you. Uh, <clears throat> an uncle of mine, quite recently, earlier this year, I think he saw me live and he said, he said, hey, nephew, I see all that money you making over there. Won't you give me some of that money? And I said, Unc, I don't know if you are joking or you're being serious, but how dare you ask me for money when I haven't talked to you in over 10 years? You see me on social media. I see you on, uh, I think it was Facebook or Instagram. I'll reach out, say hi, see how you're doing. And, and you, you, you rarely respond and out of the blue you asking me for money then a couple of days or a couple of weeks later he said hey, oh i was just kidding uh-huh maybe he was i don't know maybe he was but let my look let you know how i really felt about the situation That's how I felt. That's how I felt. There's so many different ways how your family will give you money. There's so many different ways how your family will give you money. Or is it the way they take money from you? Just today, this morning, my wife was getting contacted um, by the pastor that married us, or so it seemed. And come to find out, it was a scam. It wasn't even the pastor. I guess some hackers um, got into his uh, account and got his contacts and was basically telling her about this grant of $100,000 and you guys may be familiar with this particular scam. And she was telling me, uh, hey, babe, uh, Pastor so and such reached out to me and they were telling me about this grant that we can apply for and essentially get. And he gave me the lawyer who were going to apply for this grant because grants, getting a grant, if you go to grant.gov, if you look up grant.gov, there's all these different grants that you guys can uh, potentially receive from the federal government and uh, for whatever reason you're gonna use it for, as long as you follow the policies and guidelines that they set forth, um, you'll get this money, right? But the one thing that started to somewhat raise the red flags, at first she thought that the lawyer was doing it pro bono, right? Come to find out for certain increments of the money, like if you wanted $25,000, you had to pay the lawyer $800. I was like, and then the entire conversation was back and forth between the so-called lawyer and the so-called pastor that, again, they hacked this account. And the pastor on one end is like, hey, did you do it yet? Did you send the money? Did you, because we're trying to send this money out. You know, they, they, this lawyer is going to do all this stuff for you. It was a scam.
And I told my wife, babe, start asking questions. And slowly but surely, and I was going to do a video on this. I might still do a video on this scam because I told her to take pictures, screenshots, so I can show you guys. Um, slowly but surely, we came to find out that it was a scam, right? And we, we try to call the pastor and his wife to let them know it was a scam. Listen, in these days and time, people will try to scam and use you for everything you got. Because the one thing I did, I said, hey, you know what? I'm going to go on to Grants.gov and we'll grant out every, I said, babe, ask them what grant they're talking about. I don't know any grant that you just give them your name and your address that's dealing with the federal government that don't ask for your social security number. Don't ask you for uh, um, the purpose you're using the grant for. They don't, they don't, just, the federal government just don't give money to be given money. Now, of course, there's loopholes. Um, there's all these backdoor channels and gray areas that you can go in and get these grants for. And of course, a grant is a great thing because they just give you the money with no financial obligations. You don't pay, you don't pay the money back. You don't pay interest. This is free money. But the purpose, they need to know the purpose, right? And you got to fill out all the appropriate information in order to get this grant. So here's grants.gov where you guys can go on there. If you got a, uh, a nonprofit business, there's all sorts of grants. And I even have an app to download to your phone. So I would tell you guys go in here, go to grants.gov and see if you may um, even <clears throat> apply, uh, excuse me, qualify for a grant. And you may even want to get a grant lawyer to assist you and apply for some of these grants. Okay. And this, this is a, a federal government website, and it's very, very easy to remember. www.grants.gov. Now, for you guys who are there in the chat, stop giving all stop, stop giving all your goddamn money to your family, please. Because they're just using you. Most of them, not all of them, most of them, some of them need it. And as I said in the beginning of this video. If some of your family members, either here or abroad, you know, the, the uh, Europe, uh, uh, South America, Africa, Australia, it doesn't matter where you live, the Caribbean, those family members who are ill body, they're disabled, they're handicapped, they're sickly. I understand you supporting them. I, I have no I have no strife against that. OK, but there's a lot of your family members out there getting retirement checks, <clears throat> getting disability checks, getting assistance from the government. And I know this may vary from continent to continent, from country to country. But even with those countrymen within those continents that they don't have systems like the Western world, my question is, are they able body? What could they be doing in the information that you can give them in order for them to essentially earn their own money, to earn their own income instead of you just sending money back? each and every month, each and every month, each and every month. What could you be doing with that money? What could you be doing with that money? Now, for you guys who are just tuning in, please give me some of the situations. Give me some um, um, examples of how your family have been using you for money. Because some of you are like, oh, my family don't use me for money. <laughs> Majority of you have a situation. Most of you have an example how your family has used you for money or is still using you for money. Let other viewers, let other people learn how the different ways how family will manipulate you, how family will trick you. Hey, oh man, I just need some gas money. I'm about to go pick up this check. Well, how much money you need in gas? Oh, man, I probably need like $40, $50. Oh, okay. You, so, yeah, yeah, I'm going to either uh, come here later on this evening or I'm going to give it to you tomorrow. How many times that happened to you and how many times you got your money back? How many times that's happened to you, to you and how many times you got your money back? Family, there's a connection between you and your family. And I'm not trying to hinder, hurt, or disconnect the bond you have with your family. But what they're doing, they're using that blood. They're using that energy. 
They're using that connection to essentially strip wealth, strip money from you in order to do all the things that they should have been doing with their money. Stop giving family all your money. There's a situation when I was in the military. I think I was about 10 years in and I met this colonel. This colonel and, 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 and I, we had a really great conversation. He said, hey, uh, I heard you deal in finance. I said, yeah, you know, I help people out with difficult situations. I teach people how to invest, save, get out of debt, et cetera. He said, well, I've been having issues paying back some of my debt. I said, okay, let's sit down. I'll make you out a debt plan and we can go about tackling some of these bills. And as I was looking at his finances, he, he let me all inside of his bank accounts. I'm looking at his money. I said, hey, 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 hey. As a colonel, they make well over $100,000. I said, hey, sir, why do you have this large sums of debt? And I see $2,000, $2,000. Some of you are like $2,000 a month. He was giving his sister, able-bodied sister, $2,000 a month. And the story she gave him was that she was trying to start a hair care business. She was trying to start a hair care business. And can anyone just guess how long he was paying her this $2,000. And this is just one family member. One. He was giving money to, if my memory serves me correct, around four or five family members. But this was the most. Guess how long he was giving his, his sister this $2,000 per month? Absolutely free as a love gift. Some of you are like, oh, yeah, yeah, about a, about a year, two years. He was giving his sister this money, $2,000 every month, direct deposit on an allotment for five years. He was giving his sister $2,000 every month for five years. And guess what, family? She had a job. <laughs> She had a job. And after the first year, he said, hey, when are you going to start opening up this store? And she said, oh, well, you know, right now we're trying to um, acquire the land. And then after the first year and a half, she says, oh, we acquired the land. He didn't ask for deeds. He didn't ask for title. He didn't ask for a uh, proof of sale a buyer sheet. He didn't ask for anything because he trusted his sister because it's his sister, right? Someone he grew up with, someone he played with, or someone he depended on. She depended on him as they were kids. But don't forget, when your sisters and brothers, your cousins and your friends that you grew up with, when they become grown, everybody changes, don't they? Two years and a half. He said, hey, uh, when you guys are going to start building the land? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to start building the land here in a couple of months. Do you know he avoided the conversation of where his fucking money was going? Do you understand he avoided it because it was his sister and he felt obligated? He felt like since he was doing good, they sh he should give his sister his, mon his money. And not until he met me did he call up his sister and demanded his money, proof of where his money was going. And all the while, I said, hey, did you look on her social media? Oh, no, nah. you know, he, he was an old school cat. Oh, I don't know she got social media. Come to find out she got Instagram. Come to find out he was blocked on her Facebook. He was blocked on her Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So he got in touch with another family member. And he said, hey, uh, do you uh, have you been on so-and-so's Instagram? He said, yeah, yeah, I've been on her Instagram. And within those five years, can I just divulge to you guys what she has been doing with the money? Well, she's been in Italy. <laughs> She's been to Jamaica. She went to Greece. She went to South Africa. She's been to, uh, uh, I think she went down to Argentina. She was taking all types of trips. And at the end of the day, to make a very, 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 very long story short, when he asked for those official documents of proof of purchase, proof of sale, buyer sheet, financial documents, she had nothing to show him. And then when he cut her off, she called him up, say, hey, what's going on? I, I thought X, Y, and Z. He said, well, I see that you've been taking trips, lavish trips, and I don't see any return. I don't see, uh, I asked you for this. You didn't provide it. I asked for the the, the, per the proof of the purchase of the land. Uh, did you buy building materials? Did you pay contractors these titles? She didn't provide any documents to say that she was using this money to actually start a business. Good evening, Mitchell Liggins from Alaska. Nice to see you here, this brother. It's late night here. Well, not in Alaska. He's probably like three or four hours behind. But anyway, I think this, this conversation doesn't go over lightly for a lot of people that your family use you for money. And, and the way they use you for money, again, they use their connection to you. They use your bond to them. They use your kids. They use their kids. And when it comes to aunts and uncles, the stories I keep uh, hearing back and forth is, remember I took you to, remember you stayed over my house. Remember all the things I did when you was a kid. That's the point. You was a kid. You had no obligations. That's what family members do. They don't wait till you grow up find out that you're a millionaire, find out that you're financially stable and ask for the money back? No. But that's what they will use to get money out of your pocket for absolutely nothing. And as a point that I said early in this video, find out how much, find out the severity of how much they really need the money versus how much they want the money. And then the other part of that is what are they willing to do to earn the money? Are they willing to pick you up and be your driver and you pay them 15, 20, 25 dollars an hour? Are they willing to come over and clean your house and cook your meals and babysit your kids? Are they willing to do that? If they're not willing to do that, then guess what? They don't need the money. They don't need the money. Oh, yeah. I want people to disagree. I want people to disagree. And, you know, the most pushback I get is from people who live um, mostly in the continent of Africa and also in Asia, because believe it or not, there's a lot of poor Asian countries just as well as there are a lot of poor African countries and not all African countries are poor. I'm not saying that. So don't take that out of context. But there's a lot of not well-to-do countries in Africa and Asia, okay? There's a lot of countries within the continent of Africa. There's a lot of countries in Asia that are not well-to-do. And you will see, especially a lot of Filipinos, they send a lot of money back to their family members. A lot of uh, people from Mexico, they send a lot of money back to their family members. A lot of Africans to the different countries in Africa, they send a lot of money back to them. But what are they willing to do for that money? What are they willing to do? I want to go back to a comment that CEO Collins wrote, which was very profound. He says, they do what they want to do with their money. Think on that for a moment. They do what they want to do with their money. 
and do what they have to do with your money. They call you two days before their rent is due. They call you when they got two eggs and a cup of water in the refrigerator and tell you that your nieces and nephews, your grandchildren are doing bad. Here's another story. I won't give my brother names, but I believe uh, uh, my buddy Mitch knows about this. A buddy of mine paid his son's way out of jail, in and out of jail. He paid $5,000 for him to get out of jail. And I asked him, well, what is he doing now? My buddy told me, I don't know what he's doing. I don't even care. I told him that was the last time I was going to do anything financially for him. I said, you going to let him live with you? He said, hell no. He's 35 years of age. See, it's the choices that people make in their life. And this is one of the last points I want to make here with this particular topic is I want you to think about all the decisions that your family have made. Really, really think. I want you to think about all the different decisions and choices your family has made over these past 10 years when it comes to finances. What did they do and what they didn't do? But now they're asking you for money. What about this one, family? Your family member has a skill or talent. Your family member have a skill or talent and you put them in place. You put them in contact with the right people to, to essentially uh, utilize their skills and talents, right? Uh, let's take, for instance, you know, one of your family members went to IT school. They, they know how to build systems. They know how to write code. But when you put them in contact with somebody who can help them out and network, they don't even exercise on the connections and networking that you've given them. They're, they're fine right where they are, making $15, $20 an hour. But as soon as they get in a financial bind, they call you. But they didn't take your advice. They didn't take your uh, connections. They didn't utilize the network that you set forth. See, I, I see this all the time where, hey, man, you know, I can't help you, but I got a buddy who's in that sector. They're in that industry. They're in that world that I know he'll, he'll assist you and help you totally free. You'll wait a week or two weeks. You call up your friend. Hey, uh, did, did my brother call you? Did my sister call you? Did my friend call you? Nah, man, I know you told me they're going to call, but they ain't call me yet. They ain't leave a message. I gave him your email. Well, I gave him your email address. I gave him your phone number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they didn't contact me. Stop giving family all your money. Because what I realize when people aren't willing to work for the money, when people aren't willing to sacrifice for the money, and you just give them money, they're going to use your money. And more times than not, they're not going to pay you that money back. And in any case, they're going to continue to ask you for money. And even though a time like this, as I showed you guys time and time again, over and over again, that these so-called family members, even in the current situation that we're living in with this uh, uh, labor shortage, that I've been showing you guys. They're not even willing to apply for a job. And then have you ever met family members who are snooty, who are uppity, but they broke as shit? You ever met a family member like that? Oh, I ain't, I ain't working at no McDonald's. You don't have any money. You're broke. Money is money. Money is money. You can take $15 an hour, invest that money in triple and quadruple. Burn, burnout city, the labor shortage 
has dragged on and Alaska workers and business owners. Why aren't people going back to work? America's small businesses still can't find workers. Labor shortage gives retail and uh, restaurant workers labor shortage expected to continue as employers struggle. Employers are struggling. Employers are struggling. Employers are struggling. But your family is asking you for money where there's all these jobs that nobody is applying for. And as I said before, and I'll say it again, they are accepting people who are well underqualified. They are hiring people without the skills and experience that they said uh, uh, that's in their little job description, and job titles. Oh, we want you to have a bachelor's degree and at least three years of experience. And it's preferred that you have these certifications, but uh, we just need some warm damn bodies in here to do the work. Employers are struggling to hire people and no one's applying for jobs. And the excuse they're giving you <laughs> is that we're living in a pandemic. That's why they're not going back to work. And some of these jobs, 50% of these jobs are probably working remotely where the employer would send you a computer, where the employer would send you a printer, where the employer would give you a phone, where the employer would pay partial of your internet bill. Somebody let me know if I'm lying. Let me know if I'm lying, family. Please put in the chat. Say, Ross, you're lying. There's no labor shortage. I'm looking at all these different restaurants. I'm looking at all these different businesses, and they're saying, oh, I'm sorry that business is slow. Uh, we're still trying to hire on a couple of people. You guys ever went to a restaurant lately, and they said, still hiring or now hiring you, you you see that and then i say well you got a car you ever thought about uber eats you ever thought about doing uber you have i ain't letting nobody in my car you don't need the money you don't need the money you don't need the money listen let me tell you something you don't need the money because i can tell you something if i needed the money just like my wife when i met my wife she had about four or five different jobs. She was working her job as a nurse. She would get off her nursing job. She would do Uber for two or three hours. She was doing whatever it takes to live the life she wanted to live. She was doing whatever it takes to live the life she wanted to live. Working night shift, doing Uber during the day, working day shift doing Uber at night, working part-time here, going to a senior citizen home, changing pampers. She was doing all sorts of things. And I tell most people, I tell most people, if your family needed the money, you say, hey, 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 what do you want to do in life? Oh, um, I want to do IT. I want to be a nurse. I want to be an electrician. I want to be a plumber. Okay, okay. Well, well, I'll pay. I'll pay for your certification. Well, why can't you just give me the money? Sound like a crack addict to me. Sound like a heroin addict to me. Sound like an alcoholic to me. If I'm going to pay for your certification, but you still just want the money, red flag. Flag on the play. You're ejected. Get out of here. You to the sidelines. Think about that. I'm willing to pay for your darn certification. And most certifications, family, and I told this and I'll say it again, most certifications are anywhere between $250 to around $5,000. And $5,000 been on the high side for you attend an electrician school, for you attend a plumber school. You know why they won't do these certifications? You know why they don't want these jobs? Because it takes freaking work. It takes freaking discipline. It takes their free time. They can't be on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook and Twitter and TikTok. Oh, no. That's going to take away from their social media time. That's going to take away uh, from their club time. That's going to 
uh, uh, take away from their chilling time. Well, well, if I do this, who's going to take care of my kids? I don't know. I don't care. I'm willing to pay for your certification. I'm willing to assist you in your dreams. You figure out the rest. Now money is no longer a problem. That thing you said you wanted to do, I'm going to assist you. And before you go take this test for your certification, I'll even sit down with you and give you a pretest and make sure you're ready. And for you, family, that's just a test to make sure they're ready and that they weren't bullshitting you so you're not wasting your money on a test. I'm done. I think that I've said that all what needs to be said. So with that being said, family, you have a great and wonderful night. And as always, this is Financial Literacy 101. Learn money and be inspired. We want to rock out here. I'm going to smoke a little bit more of my cigar and we want to chill. You have any questions or comments, put them in the chat. I'll answer them. Until then, we're going to rock out here for about two or three minutes. This is it. that subscribe link go ahead and hit that subscribe link make sure you share this video if you're not a subscriber of mine please go and hit that subscribe link i give out financial information stock advice debt advice mondays wednesdays and fridays and every friday or saturday and tuesday nights i do a cigar talk where we just talk about different financial topics you guys have a great and wonderful evening